It always comes to this. Well, there, guys, back again for another tattoo progress update. Um, where I last left off, I had had um, <clears throat> the crown of thorns done on my head by Terry. Um, as you can see, it's it's all still there. Some parts are a little hard to see. Uh, anytime you're you know healing a head tattoo and you've got like a a week of hair growth, um, or anytime you have head tattoos in general, um, and you've got a week of hair growth, you kind of can't see your existing tattoos um, very clearly but uh, just the fact that I can see it through the hair is a good sign um, some of this like opaque and white that we did got real real dark for a while there and I was like holy crap maybe this isn't gonna work you know parts of it are darker than others this part right here in particular I have a hard time seeing um, but it is there and uh, being that we did that on a uh, Three week old uh, patchy blackout on my head. Um, I mean, any result would have been fair. Realistically, if that hadn't have been there at all, that would have been, you know, about right, considering what we were doing. That being said, the the dark black lines with the panthera um, triple triple X panthera really did the trick, and they showed up better than anything. So. Um, this is a perfect example for me to once again flog the dead horse of black on black works better than white on black. Even in the least optimal situ situation or settings, uh, the black line is there, uh, and yet the white and opaques are, you know, questionable in places. Uh, the back of my head, I will uh, turn, see if I can show it off. The leaves darkened a lot. I don't even know if they're going to show up here. You can see the lines and you can see the black shading um, in case these aren't showing up. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm looking at in behind, but the last time I checked, um, and now there's even more hair growth since then, I, what I could see is I could see the black lines and the black shading. And truth be told, I won't even know what I'm looking at on this video or what I'm showing you guys until I'm editing this because um, they're pretty dark. And... I'm not real worried about that because the lines held up and that means that all we need to do is the second pass of uh, the white and the opaque, potentially a third, whatever. It'll only be like an hour of work because there is so much black in these. Sorry, I'm tired today. There is so much black in these that uh, um, not having to do the black again um, or really even touch the black up is going to shave a lot of time off of... Uh, the original three, three and a half hour session. Um, the highlights, the white, um, was the shortest part of it. So, you know, it'll be light work. But yeah, I'm uh, fairly happy with what happened with it. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be as ideal as if you waited for, you know, a couple years, um, even a three, three, four month period that we waited on my chest. It was a bit harder than what it's been to cover my arms. But uh, considering that's only three weeks and we got an image to stick, you know, that's not bad. Um, I'll show the, the just right real close. It is a very similar tone here that we have because this is only one pass white. So we do have a similar tone um, even going over uh, just three weeks versus something like four or five years for my arms. So uh, just an MO, it is doable to do um, white and black on black over top of very fresh tattoos. So, as I expected, much faster route to a cover up than laser would be. Um, this week, Terry and I have another session. We're going to be back on the head again. I've been, this is the fourth session I've had on my head in the last month since I shaved. Um, my head is probably starting to get a little annoyed. I'm not going to be backing off of it much anytime soon, however, because um, Rick and I will be back up there again and two weeks from now so um, essentially right now I'm only shaving once a week just so that I can uh, get at it again and I think I probably got five or six more sessions to do on my head before I let it chill out for a while so 
uh, somewhere around 10 sessions on my head at least this year and potentially more than that. I guess I already had one session back there too. So I guess I've had what? Four sessions? Three? What did I say? I've done the Thorns. Rick and I did an update. Terry and I did the blackout, and then we had the back of the head. So I'm at four now. I think I've got five, six more to go, at least probably more than that. So I'm going to be looking at a similar amount of work on my head this year as to what I did on my neck last year. So like a total redo. With that said, I had a session with uh, Rick, obviously. I'll get into that. People are probably tired of listening to me babble. Um, this is all healed now. It looks very similar to what I said it would and how it looked last time I showed it off. Um, this top part really did great. I think it's going to hold up really well. Um, you can see here, if you're looking, uh, we still have the original three-year-old dynamic black on black that Rick and I did. And it's all still there. That was only done once. And um, we, never, we never used Panther on that. So... And this is black on black too. You can see the difference in the shade. So like my sleeves were done again by Rick, but he didn't touch this black that was done by Lee years and years ago. So you can still see a tone, a tonal difference there. Um, and that's quite old, that's three years now. So even uh, dynamic black on dynamic black does hold up, but obviously um, using a different tone of black does the trick quite a bit more proficiently and uh, holds up better. I do believe eventually there will come a time when that won't be visible anymore, but I think it's going to be like 10 years before it's completely, you know, based on what I've seen, it's holding up better than anyone would have expected. And uh, that's with zero support. That's with zero touch-ups and um, we didn't put bold line on it or anything. So if I really wanted to, and I don't, I could go back and I could bolden that up and I could... I could get that to a state where it would stay like that forever. Um, so yeah, all of this super healed. Um, no worries about any of that. The yellow did way, way better on a second pass, which is good to see because we did some more yellow in here and green and blue, and it went pretty dark, but this is what happened last time too. The yellow mixes with the blood and it gets pretty like thick and brown and crispy looking for a while and uh so when that all peels up in there that'll be more um it'll be brighter than it is believe it or not it won't be darker um it's real hard to show off this part of your arm um i never knew how much trouble was going to be to talk and show off my sleeves um until i started doing them like the black on black and stuff i didn't do vlogs when i was doing um my original sleeves obviously that was a very long time ago and especially depending on which version of the original sleeves we're talking about, it's between, you know, 10 and 15 years ago. So I definitely wasn't doing YouTube then to show them off. Um, and then I was, I had started my YouTube when I was blacking out, uh, I think I had blacked out most of my left arm already when I started YouTube. But even then it's really hard, easy to show off a blackout arm. This stuff is like really hard to do justice to in a video format like this where I'm just talking on camera. So I'll just be leaving pictures in as I'm ch chatting about this. Um, I will say this session was, uh, f it was short, but we got a lot done. Like we're, again, we're in that place where like a little goes a long way. So as long as we're making progress, I don't really care. It was only about an hour and a half, full disclosure. Uh, Rick got super out of the, the mood to tattoo um, <laughs> because as soon as he got into my ditch, my ditch has a ton of scar tissue and there was one spot in my ditch that just sloughed up like crazy. Like the minute we touched it, I can still see it. There's a real weird divot in there. Um, it puffed up. It looks almost like, uh, like a little pimple or something of scar tissue. And as soon as that happened, my skin tightened up quite a bit in that area. And so um, he kind of ran away from it. He, go, he went and did some other stuff further down. Um, but eventually, like, we're going to have to get back in there. And he's just going to have to suck it up. And it's that simple. It will take because, like, we've already, we already know it will take. But for Rick, I think he just doesn't want to do any more damage. And I completely understand. Um, 
I wasn't upset, though. It was fine. As long as we're making progress, I don't care. That being said, I'm sure people are wondering how, how that feels going over such thick scar tissue. In that area there, I don't really notice a difference. There's no real, like, spike in pain for me. Um, it's kind of whatever. Like, I can tell my body's reacting. Like, there is a, a serious reaction there. It feels a little bit like leather. Um, but for pain, it's not really much. Um, my ditches have been done, I don't even know how many times, well over double digits in both arms. Um, this arm didn't get as badly scarred in the ditch. This arm got more scarred on the outside. So um, you can see some of the outline if you're looking close of some old stuff that I have in there. Like up in here, there's some scarring in there. And so the outer arm on the right side is um, more thick in scar and harder to cover and work with. Like even in the red, there's some black showing through a little bit and there always has been, that's not new. Um, just in here, you probably won't be able to see it on camera, but it's something that if you put under a lens, you can see that the, the uh, red was harder to saturate on the outer arm than the inner arm. Now on this arm, we're having the reverse like the outer arm is really easy the inner arm is a bit of a bitch all of this stuff was hard to saturate too believe it or not this little area in here that week when rick did this piece was over two hours of you know trying to get the ink in and you have when you're working on scar tissue it can be a little hesitant to take you have to go um beneath the scar layer um and scar is pretty thick so getting your depth right is trickier fortunately for me uh Rick has done a ton of uh, um, cover-up work in general, not necessarily work over top of black per se, but cover-ups in general. Basically, everything in Rick's books is a cover-up. I always joke to him that uh, on his deathbed, he'll still be doing cover-ups. <laughs> he won't be able to get away from it. In his afterlife, he'll be doing cover-ups. We have people, we're a small city, no, no joke, we're a real small city here, Lethbridge. When people see me in Lethbridge, they're always like, I can't believe this guy lives here. Now, that being said, we have people come from all over the province and farther for Rick because his cover-up game is very high level. He's been doing these forever. And when you do cover-ups, you don't turn them away to begin with because um, a lot of artists won't even do them. And then when you end up becoming a guy who does them very well, um, all of a sudden you have a very high demand for them. And there's only some times when it's like, I'll see some things where I'll tell people when they're consulting for Rick or they're, they're emailing to get tattooed by Rick, it's like, they'll send me like a black and gray lion or something and they've got like really, really hard black script. And I'm like, you can get this tattoo if you're open to full color, but um, otherwise probably not. Uh, you can use opaques and get something similar to that with that way, but because I know that Rick can do just about any tattoo over any other tattoo. That being said, you you may have to budge on exactly what ingredients go into it. So you can emulate a black and gray tattoo with uh, opaque grays. Um, we know we already know this. This looks pretty close to black and gray, and that's opaque and white. Um, that being said, you can't put black and gray shading over top of other black. Uh, not not really. It's not going to work. You can obscure it, but you're not going to be able to hide it that way. Whereas with opaques and, and black, um, some white, and especially if you're open to other colors, you can really hide just about any tattoo without the use of laser. Um, I mean, I can't even... I'll, I'll see if I could find a few of his cover-ups and uh, put them in here, but he's done some insane things over the years, and I'm not saying he's a wizard and uh, no one else has done this or anything like that. It's just, if you're a good cover-up artist, you end up taking a lot of cover-ups. And uh, I always joke, he, he hasn't worked on a piece of fresh skin in 20 years. <laughs> and it's becoming less and less of a joke and more and more of a reality. <laughs> and I'm probably not helping with that either because a lot of his clientele comes off of me. <laughs> anyway... Uh, I'm not going to rant and rave too much more. I've got some other things I want to talk about. Um, I had some other topics that I'm not going to get to this time. Um, I have a really cool update for everyone, and I can't wait to show it off, but that'll be in the next video. 
So I'll show off how this arm turned out one more time. And again, the ditch is going to heal a little hard, but nothing crazy. It's already feeling better than it was yesterday. Um, next week, we're going to be coming down to this spot. And uh, then the following week, we'll be back on the head. All right, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Have a great day.